your school is through a computer screen. Go to Science Corner with Constantine. All right, so for today's lab, we're going to do a little bit of at-home microbiology. Have you ever walked into my classroom and noticed that it can smell really bad? Sometimes why my room smells so bad is because I am growing bacteria. One of the best labs that we do during the microbiology unit is growing bacteria samples. So when we take petri plates and we swab, take samples from various spots around the school and grow them and see what the bacteria looks like. But right now I'm not in my classroom. I thought, how am I going to pull off this lab without petri dishes, without the incubator at school, without any of the supplies that I have? And I remembered something that one of my college professors said, which was the reason why petri dishes are round is because back, way back in the early days of microbiology, they actually used potato slices. So I thought, well, why not use potato slices to study microbiology again? So for today's lab, we're actually going to do microbiology the old, old fashioned way and see if we can get a colony of bacteria growing on a potato slice so we can study the bacteria that we might find in our homes. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get as round of a slice as possible. I'm going to do a few slices so I can take a few different samples, but I want the slices to be about a quarter inch thick. You get a couple of slices in there. All right, so these are going to become my Petri dishes. Now that I've sliced them, we have to cook them and boil them. So I'm gonna start a pot of water. I'm gonna boil these potatoes till they're roughly the softness that they would be for me to eat them. All right, I'm gonna wait for this water to boil. I'm gonna cook these potatoes. We'll reconvene in just a moment. Okay, so my potatoes are done. So I'm gonna drain out the boiling water and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this table, I have five cooked potato slices. I let them cool. That way they would be cool enough for me to handle, but also not so hot that they kill the bacteria on them because we want the bacteria to grow. We don't wanna kill it. Um, one of the things that we want to keep in mind is that we want these potatoes to come into contact with as little amount of bacteria as possible because we ideally will only grow the bacteria that we actually are testing for. So there's a couple reasons why these potatoes have to be cooked. The first is because a raw potato is quite sticky and starchy and it's not quite the environment that we're going for, but the main reason is because boiling it is going to kill any of the germs that are already there. So we want to try to start with a clean slate. The first thing that we need to do is set up our control potato. I know you remember because we talked about it in science fair and when we learned about experimental design, a control is what we use as a comparison. So we're going to have one potato that we do nothing to. This control potato isn't going to get any special treatment. We're going to use this potato to compare what grows on a regular potato if we don't add anything. So to set up our control potato, I'm gonna take a regular Q-tip, which is what I'm gonna to use to gather bacteria, but I'm not gonna put any bacteria on it. I'm just gonna grab it from the container. I'm gonna hold just the edges of the potato, and I'm going to gently rub the Q-tip on top of the potato and put it on my plate. So I'm going to take a tiny piece of paper and label that potato control. I'm gonna put it right underneath the potato. Now I'm gonna take some sample potatoes. I think a great place to get bacteria would be the surface of my hand. We're always telling each other to wash our hands, so let's see what grows on mine. Take a Q-tip, grab the end of it, I'm gonna hold one end and sample with the other end. Sample my hand in between my fingers. Then I'm gonna hold the potato by the edges, wipe my sample on the potato, put it on the plate. And I'll label that one hand. 
All right, now I think I wanna get a sample from water. I wanna see how much bacteria is in my tap water here at this house. And I'm gonna label that one sink water. All right, now I think I wanna get a sample from outside. So it just rained pretty recently here at my house, so I think it would be cool to get a sample of like rainwater, so like puddle sample. All right, so I'm gonna spread that sample and label it puddle. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is get a pond water sample. There is so much bacteria in pond water, so I think I might be able to find some. I, there's a pond across from my house, so I'm gonna get a sample from there and see what grows. Where are we going? We're going to the pond. Wait, which, what? Come on, Jenna. This isn't even our pond. It's for science. Oh look, the pond. That's nasty. Swab it. Label this one pond water. Okay, so now that we've got bacteria samples on all of these potato slices, we need to incubate them. In school, we would incubate them in our incubator. An incubator is this sort of warm little box, it's like a, a warm fridge, that lets bacteria grow. A lot of bacteria like to grow in warmer temperatures, like the temperature of our body. But these are gonna incubate at room temperature. So the same bacteria might not grow because some bacteria likes to grow hot, some bacteria likes to grow cold. So let's see which bacteria will grow when we incubate these at room temperature. I'm gonna cover them with this lid. And I'm gonna leave it at room temperature overnight and we'll see what grows tomorrow. Okay, day two. Looks like we don't have anything growing yet. That doesn't surprise me because we're incubating it at room temperature. So the growth's probably gonna be a little bit slower. But this is the morning. I did this last night. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. But yeah, nothing yet. Okay, so it's been two days and I have actually a lot of growth, which is super exciting. So let's, let's look at my potato. So this is the control potato right here in the camera here. I'm going to pick it up. So the control actually doesn't really have any major like spots it's really hard to tell it's got like one white spot at the top so that must mean there's some like bacteria already on the potato so see that like white dot at the top so there's just like a little bit that was already on the potato so that's good to know um my hand it looks like it has like a little bit of growth so there's some like white growth at the top there so the sink water it's got Basically the same like white dot that the control had. Uh, it doesn't look like it has that much growth, so that's good. Um, so this was the puddle. This has a lot of growth. It's going to be hard to tell on camera. But if you look, every single shiny dot is a colony of bacteria. And it looks like there's like some red too. So every single shiny dot is a colony of bacteria. So there's a lot of bacteria in the puddle. Um, and this one is the best one. This is the pond. If you look, all those teeny tiny dots, each of them is a colony of bacteria. And there's some dark spots too, so that means that we must have found like a bunch of different species of bacteria in the pond, which is so, so cool. And I grew it. And I gotta wash my hands now. But yeah, so pretty much... My control didn't have much. My hand had a little. Um, the sink water didn't have much, which was good. The puddle had a lot, and the pond had a lot. So I'm so happy that this actually worked, and I hope it works for you. Do this. This is really cool, and this is like the old, old-fashioned way 
to study. Like, this is like what they did before they even really understood what bacteria was. So, I feel very cool that I did that, and you should too. Science Corner with Constantine. Do it for science!